joining me now, Dr. James Boyce. He's a political analyst and expert of U.S. political history and the author of the book, Clinton's War on Terror, Redefining U.S. Security Strategy. Dr. Boyce, thanks for coming on. Thank you, Natalie. It's great to speak to you. All right, well, let's begin with Pete Buttigieg. Uh, he won the first contest uh, for the Democrats. He won Iowa and then bows out right before Super Tuesday. Did that surprise you? Well, I think the challenge is that it was very difficult to see quite where Pete Buttigieg's uh, campaign was going to be going. They have to be able to see a route, I think, to the nomination. Otherwise, they're just going to act as spoilers. And when you look at the states that are going to be voting come Tuesday, uh, those giant states like uh, Texas, California, for example, states like Massachusetts, it was very difficult to see where Pete Buttigieg was going to pick up any serious delegates. When you see the polling for the moment uh, and uh, who it is that's leading, uh, he was, I think, at great risk of coming in under the 15 percent floor in many of those states and basically getting no return whatsoever for his money. So I think this was a wise choice. It certainly helps uh, Joe Biden, I think, coming out of his victory uh, in South Carolina as well. Well, let's talk quickly about the Buttigieg campaign. When he first came on the scene, all of us here at CNN were like, where, what, South Bend, what's this guy's name? And look where he went. He talked about values and what he stood for um, with his followers when he bowed out. Um, but he also talked about being the first openly gay candidate who won delegates in the primary. So what does his candidacy say in the bigger picture? There's no doubt about it. I think that Pete Buttigieg has, uh, has certainly uh, uh, broken boundaries uh, within the Democratic Party. Uh, he has, as you rightly said, uh, there, uh, been the first uh, openly gay candidate to pick up uh, delegates moving forward through this primary season. But I think the challenge is that um, he spoke with a relatively uh, narrow uh, part of the Democratic a party, and uh, as I'm sure many of your viewers are aware, the Democratic Party is a very broad church, uh, and you need to get a very broad coalition if you're going to win the presidency. And that involves getting the African American community, uh, which it looked like Pete Buttigieg was really struggling to uh, claw onto. We saw the uh, the results in South Carolina, for example. And again, if you look at the states that are going to be voting on Tuesday, those states in the South. Uh, it looked particularly unlikely, I think, that he was going to be moving forward. So I think he's got a bright future. Uh, he's done uh, perhaps better than expected uh, this time round. But I would certainly say that this is not the last we're going to hear uh, of Mayor Pete. Right. His, his uh, followers, of course, chanting 2024. So we shall see about that. So, so Tom Sire's out. Pete Buttigieg is out. Klobuchar, Warren hanging in right before Super Tuesday. Now we've got Biden with the momentum. We have Bernie... Uh, at the top and then enter a wild card Bloomberg. Uh, what do you expect on Super Tuesday? Well, it's going to be a wild ride, I think, Natalie. Uh, if you look at the states that are going to be voting, um, you know, it looks like Joe Biden, despite the big bounce he's getting in terms of uh, fundraising coming out of South Carolina, he appears to be riding off California. It looks like uh, uh, I think uh, Sanders is going to do very, very well there. Likely in Texas, uh, we may have the unbelievable sight of a socialist winning the Democratic primary in Texas. Who thought that possible? It looks also as though uh, uh, Bernie Sanders, who was here in uh, Boston, uh, very much nipping at the heels of Elizabeth Warren, is also going to be trying very hard to embarrass uh, um, uh, Klobuchar in her home state uh, as well. So uh, I think it's going to be a good night for Bernie Sanders. The big question, I think, is how much can Joe Biden nip at his heels and pick up those uh, uh, those voters, which uh, are now going to peel off, I think, uh, from Pete Buttigieg. Um, the great wild card is is, uh, is is Bloomberg, quite frankly. He's spending a fortune, astronomical amounts of money. He's betting the farm on Super Tuesday. And if you look at uh, some of the polling, uh, which I appreciate uh, we may have to take with a pinch of salt because of Buttigieg's sudden exit, uh, Bloomberg come, come away with this with very little to show for his investment, I think. Yeah. And if I could just correct you, he's actually betting the farms. That's how much money he's spending. <laughs> you know, seriously. Yes, indeed. Betting all the farms. Yeah, all the farms, exactly. Well, I was reading an article by Tom Friedman in the New York Times, an acclaimed columnist and author, who said, if the Democratic Party doesn't unite at some point, it cannot be a Bernie Sanders wing. Um, it cannot be a Biden wing. Um, it's got to unite or it will not beat Donald Trump. How critical is that in your view? 
Yeah, that's right. Um, there's no doubt about it. If you go back uh, four years to 2016, it's important to remember that Donald Trump in most of the primaries was not the was not favored by the majority uh, of voters in those states, but he was backed by the largest minority of voters. So he was routinely winning uh, those primaries with, uh, you know, sort of 35, 45 percent of the vote. What that meant was that if, if the rest of the delegates had dropped out, it was entirely possible that a stop Trump uh, candidate could have emerged if that had happened early enough. All right. We appreciate your insights and your expertise, Dr. James Boyce. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, Natalie.